I am a project coordinator at the Upper Midwest Telehealth Resource Center. Today we are going to talk about Care Coordination 101, CCM, BHI, and COCM, which I will go ahead and define all of those here in a bit. So I work for Indiana Rural Health Association and umbrella under that, I work for a project with Upper Med Midwest Telehealth Resource Center on telehealth projects. Um, just to share a little bit about you, about myself, um, we can all relate to the emojis in the world today with cell phones. And so I just did a little emoji picture of who I am and my career. So I'm happily married. Um, so they say most of the time anyways. Uh, we have five kids, um, two girls at the bookends and three boys in the middle. We're a blended family, so I kind of put the toss salad in there for a blend because that always um, changes things up a little bit in life, um, makes you more resilient, um, definitely some adversity that comes your way. Again, I work for Indiana Rural Health Association as I have the hospital in there. Our goal is to increase access and quality of care for all rural Hoosiers and beyond. Um, and I own a beach volleyball facility. And then below that, we have the um, boiler up. So I'm a Purdue graduate in public health. I traveled the country um, doing health screenings and um, health coaching for companies all across the world. Um, phlebotomy was a big thing um, that we did. And then I did healthy cooking camps following seven years of that. And now, um, like I said, I work for Indiana Rural Health Association doing um, telehealth and lots of other grant projects. So to get started, um, why care coordination? So we do care coordination for three very simple reasons. We want to optimize care, we want to reduce costs, and we want to improve the outcomes for our patients, for all populations in healthcare settings. So did you know for chronic care management, in the first two years, of the payment policy, the 35 million that were eligible Medicare beneficiaries, only 684,000, that's less than 2% of patients receive these services. So CMS created these services, but they're not being utilized effectively. As you can see, there's a need for it. Six in 10 adults have one chronic condition and four in 10 adults have two or more chronic conditions, which, which then leads to very high healthcare costs. So the care coordination services that we're gonna talk about are CCM, chronic care management, BHI, behavioral health integration, and COCM, collaborative care model. We're gonna talk about what it is, what the reimbursements are, and how to get started and make it sustainable. So chronic care management began, or was created in 2015 by Medicare um, and for Medicare patients with multiple chronic conditions. It's based off a team-based approach to healthcare. So the patient is at the center. Interventions are put in place to help the patient remain healthy, prevent further decline, and the hope is to reduce risk and decrease cost. All services must have a comprehensive care plan, established, implemented, revised, and monitored, a clinical summary record, and the care plan includes the demographics, problems, medications, et cetera. Authorized billing providers are physicians, certified nurse midwives, clinical nurse specialists, nurse practitioners, and physician's assistants. It's very broad. Really, the only qualification is they have to be clinical staff, so they have to have a clinical um, degree. Behavioral health in integration, which is BHI as we know it, is more about a patient with any mental or behavioral health condition being treated by the billing practitioner. This also includes substance disorders. They may or may not um, be required to have a comorbid, chronic, or other medical condition being managed by the practitioner. Initiating visit is required for patients that have not been seen within a year. So this is an important one. It is, is of course required with CCM, which many times that's the annual wellness visit um, or the PP, IPPV. We know that there's a need for it. Anxiety affects more than 40 million adults and depression over 17.3 million adults in the United States. And that's only what's monitored and um, taken on surveys. And we probably know that it's higher than that. There are many people out there to, that are depressed or anxious that don't even fall into this category. One important distinguished distinction is that 
if you are a rural health clinic or a federally qualified health clinic, you fall into a different code. And we'll talk about the coding here in a second. But they combined general um, care coordination services. They call it um, general care management code G0511. So it's CCM or BHI. So they can have two chronic conditions or they can have a mental behavioral health condition. And then they would just do one code and they have the average of some of the codes we'll talk about here in a second. The last collaborative or um, coordinated care um, service is the collaborative care model. It's an evidence-based model designed to enhance primary care by adding management support for patients receiving behavioral health treatment and regular psychiatric consultation. So basically it's taking three groups of people and combining them together. Your primary care team, your care manager, which can be um, in the collaborative care model, um, any clinical staff member, and then the psychiatrist. So these patients do have a psychiatric diagnosis and we want to manage these three people working together to help the patient. So here are some codes that, and some reimbursements that are good to know, um, as you might've heard. 99490 is the CCM code, chronic care management. It's 20 minutes of care coordination by clinical staff member each month which is overseen by a, a provider. The reimbursement average is about $40. Complex CCM means that this patient has a complex case that takes more than the average case for a condition. And that's 9947. And complex care coordination requires 60 minutes or more with two or more chronic conditions by a clinical staff member. And the reimbursement's $120. The behavioral health integration 99498, or, sorry, 99484, and that is any patient with any behavioral health condition. Um, this is 20 minutes of care coordination by a clinical staff member um, or any member that falls into it. You actually don't have to have a clinical degree. Could be somebody with a behavioral health background that is coordinating the care under a provider or a psychiatrist, which is around $40. Um, the psychiatric COCM model, the CLEB model, is 99492, 99493, which is 70 minutes for that first initial visit, then 60 minutes every month after there. Um, and the reimbursement's $160 and $30, and it's managed by a psychiatrist. Then we go back to the FQHCs and RHCs. Um, that's the general BHI code, that's G G0511. And what they did is they took an average of the complex CCM and the BHI slash CCM, and they get an average reimbursement of $67 per month for 20 minutes of care. The psychiatric COCM for RHCs and FQHCs is G0512, which is 60 minutes of care managed by a psychiatrist, and that's $145. So of course, all of these resources are available on cms.gov, which provide an amazing resource for any FAQs and any questions. Um, toolkits to get started and any further questions you might have. This is just a little chart to see glimpse into what could be possible for the reimbursement for the ROI for your practice. So if you have 1,500 patients um, that are eligible for Medicare, Medicare patients, um, and the reimbursement for the AWV is $167. For CCM, it's around $40, um, so $42 we have on here. We estimate the enrollment at 37%, and so that gives you 555 patients that you would have to enroll these Medicare patients for that first every year and do an annual wellness visit. Um, then we do estimated percent of CCM enrollment. So we did 59% of the eligible Medicare patients with two or more chronic conditions, and that gives us about 885 patients. So the gross revenue for AWVs, which many times aren't being submitted or doing um, in offices, primary care offices, um, as you can see, the number there is um, 92. 1,962, and then the gross revenue for CCM is 448,000 and some numbers. So as you can see, there's potential for revenue, um, pre pretty significant revenue. 
I think the key though, as you'll see, is that it looks great, the numbers look great, but how do we successfully implement this and make it sustainable? So there's four pieces that I'll talk about today. Buy-in, data and analytics, recruitment, and the workflow, tools, and health coaching. So buy-in, in my opinion, when we've been working with handfuls of other offices and hospitals and primary care settings around Indiana is a critical piece in the puzzle. You need to get the CEO, the CFO, your IT, your billing department, providers, and all clinical staff members that would be involved in this on board. If you don't have the buy-in and people aren't, and the staff that are involved in this process don't believe in it, don't feel like it's a useful tool or program, then more than likely you're not gonna be successful. The next one is metrics and population health. So we have to measure and know our population before we start a program like this. And why is this important? Um, because we really wanna target the most prevalent high, rank, high risk chronic conditions and um, CCM. We wanna understand and measure, measure for the social determinants of health, which is one piece that we frequently hear about today. Population health, social determinants of health. So how do we get that? How do we get, how do we measure for social determinants of health in our patient population with our beneficiaries that we have, our Medicaid, Medicare beneficiaries? So the social determinants of health are our education. How educated are they? Do they have a job? What's their social and community like? What are their financials like? Their income, food, their housing, their car, because we know that these are so closely tied to their, um, their, their health conditions. And then of course, access to healthcare. So if we do surveys on our annual wellness visits, our annual visits for any patient, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, private payer, then we can start to run, we can gather data and run some analytics and build actual interventions based off of those social determinants of health. So I'll give you some examples here. So how many Medicare patients in your practice have heart disease, diabetes, cancer, high blood pressure, et cetera? So let's say you do a survey or you pull a report. You don't even have to do a survey. You pull a report and you find out 20% of your population is diabetic at your clinic. You say, okay, there's a need for this. So you ask yourself some questions. What resources do you have in place or could you tap into around the community? What programs could you add? Are there educators on site? So we know then that we have to go and target these diabetic patients. How do we recruit them? How do we tell them about the chronic care management program? Another example is 40% of your population marked on a survey from annual physicals or AWVs that they are depressed. Hey, what are we gonna do about that? That's high. We know there's a significant need to tackle the depression, anxiety, behavioral health problems in this area. So we wanna look at our resources. Do we have referrals in place? Psychiatrists, psychologists, LCSWs in the area. If we don't, what are other solutions? Telehealth solutions is a big one. So if we need to access people outside of our community, especially in rural areas, what are we gonna do about that? Recruitment is big. So we think, okay, we have all these patients that qualify for, for um, two or more chronic conditions for the chronic care management program, but we can't seem to get them enrolled into the program. So we need to run reports, figure out how many patients there are. We need to do sample letters, welcome letters, an email distribution list. On-site re recruitment has been a popular thing that has gained some big recruitment numbers. Um, flyers, handouts, electronic communication, education, energy, and quality of care. So this goes into the buy-in. If people are excited about it and your staff and your provider and your clinical staff are excited to gain more patients to participate in this program, then you're, you're going to be more successful at recruiting. Because if you don't have the numbers, you're not going to get the reimbursement and you're not going to make a difference. Documentation, which is important i wouldn't say the most important but you have to know how you're going to document um, and what are the best practices for chronic care management and behavioral health integration 
So how are you going to document these sessions? Are you using your own EHR or EMR system? Or are you hiring an outside source? If you hire an outside source, where are you inputting this information from them so that the provider can utilize this information with the patient? Have you created a care coordination team, plan consistent recurring meetings, create and design goals and objectives? This is super important to measure and evaluate how your program is doing. Who's on your team and what are the roles and responsibilities? The CEO, CFO, IT is a big player in this. Billing is super important. The providers and the clinical staff. Training on health coaching, which is because of these programs are patient-centered, health coaching and behavior change is a big piece of that. So maybe getting some training on that. And then how will you measure the success? Do you have surveys? And are you measuring your goals and objectives? So here's just step one, step two, step three, mainly for chronic care management, but could it be carried over to the behavioral health integration? So we recruit, we document, we make sure we have signed consent, which is an important piece, um, enter the, the, the patient information if it's not in your EMR, and then create a care plan. Then we have to go into billing, which can be tricky because every provider, every payer is different, so we have to know the ins and outs of that. FAQs are all on CMS.gov. If you look up CCM or BHI or COCM, which provide very detailed um, information on specific questions. For example, a, a common question that we get is what place of service should report it on the physician claim? Because these care coordination services are not considered telehealth services, what can be done over the video, um, you wonder, you know, where is the place of service? So the place of service is where the billing practitioner is normally ordinarily seeing face-to-face -face care with that beneficiary. <clears throat> so this is important for COCM, EHI, and CCM. So it's where the patient is normally being seen by the provider. You do not have to provide face-to-face -face care for CCM, BHI, or COCM. Okay, so after we went over all those codes and all of the billing information, um, I'm gonna throw a little curveball at you. As you could see in the beginning, sports is kind of a big part of my life, so I just thought I'd throw you a little curveball. So curveballs can actually be hit out of the park or they can be missed big time, right? And um, can be a really bad thing. So a couple curveballs. So the first one, there's a new proposed rule for 2020 for care coordination services. I am not gonna get into the details of that, but I just want to make everybody aware of that in case it happens in 2020 and it does get passed. So CMS is proposing new time categories for non-complex CCM, the 99490, which is going to be GCC1 and GCC2. And so what that's doing is it's filling the gap between 20 minutes of care and then 60 minutes of care, which is that complex CCM. Um, because many times a clinical staff might spend an extra 20 minutes on a patient, which probably happens frequently, but they might not reach that 60 minutes and get reimbursed for it. Another one is the principal care management. This is 30 minutes of physician time per month for one complex chronic condition. We know patients need care, and manage care and help with goals and their medication adherence and their care plan, even with only one chronic condition, because that could be just as significant as two or in it of itself. So there's a new one, GPPP1. And then we have um, the remote patient monitoring, which we know that code in 2019, which is 99457 of 20 minutes of clinical staff time, but there's two big changes. So there's an additional code for 20 minutes, 994X0, and then 99457. So as you can see, the reimbursements for that, getting more reimbursement. The other curveball, which is, could be a really good thing, is the proposed bill to eliminate copays. So that has been one of the biggest barriers in getting patients to come on board of a chronic care management program or behavioral health integration because they get a bill in the mail saying you owe 20% of $40, which is $8, but it just becomes a big giant billing mess. 
And so it has not been passed yet, but they're working on that. And so we'll see what happens in 2020. So those are some things to look out for. So I'm going to summarize with the call to action for anybody that's wanting to either start a care coordination program like CCM, BHI, or COCM, or improve on what they're currently doing. If you don't have buy-in, if you haven't started yet, or if you already have, work on that. Work on getting the statistics, getting a group of people together to um, the stakeholders in it that you know, see a need and a desire and a passion to build this program to make a difference in your community with these patients with chronic conditions and behavioral health conditions so that they get that extra help and those extra resources that they need to improve their health and wellness. Gather the data and analytics. Again, the important piece of this is that population health piece. So what's driving these patients to not be able to manage their condition? And many times it falls under the um, social determinants of health. So their income, their social ability, do they have a car? Um, what is their education level? And so once we learn that about our patients and about our um, population, then we're more able to service, service their needs. Recruit, recruit, recruit. So what are the biggest recruiting methods that work for you? And they may work different in every clinic and every place. So find ways that you recruit. Um, maybe it's on site, maybe it's a letter, maybe it's a text message that you guys have new savvy technology that you can send to your patients to um, get on board with chronic care management. Maybe it's flyers in the bathrooms. Um, develop the workflow and documentation. Figure out, can we outsource this? more sense or can we hire within? And if we do outsource, how are we gonna gather that information that they gathered to work with our provider and the patient? And then last of all, no program is a good program without evaluation. So many times you start these programs and you don't evaluate how successful they are. Um, create a survey that goes out to your patients that says, you know, how um, happy are you with the services provided for chronic care management? You know, how effective? Um, do a pre and post survey. Um, how are you managing your condition before you get started with your care manager? How are you managing your condition after your, um, maybe, you know, post six months? So evaluation is key in all of this. So if you have any questions, you can email me at kconnor at indiana rha dot work. Um, I appreciate your time today and look forward to hearing from anybody that might have questions. Again, um, CDC and CMS.gov are the best resources to help you implement um, any of these programs within your healthcare organization. So thank you so much for your time. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Katie, are you still there? I am still here. Okay, I'm gonna open it up for questions for folks. Bear with me, I'm gonna mute myself again here. And if you have questions that come about later, feel free to, like I said, to um, shoot me an email, give me a call, and I'd be glad to help you out. Looks like we might have a, we're an organization just starting, how do you suggest getting buy-in from hospitals, physicians? That's a great question, Tiffany. So I would say first and foremost is to gather the people, the decision makers. So gather the decision makers, and I would suggest maybe pulling a report of how many Medicare patients that you have. Um, if you're do, I'm not sure if your question's for chronic care management, behavioral health integration, or collaborative care model, CCM. Okay, awesome. So I would pull a report to see how many Medicare patients that you do have. And then if there's any way to figure out 
how many, I think there probably is a report to see um, how many Medicare patients have two or more chronic conditions, um, and then take that to the key um, stakeholders, the decision makers, and say, you know, we feel like there's a need for this, and then, um, you know, have a, a plan in place of how you want to go about getting it started. And I think one, it takes one person's passion to make people aware of that. So I hope that helps. Okay, Katie, for whatever reason, I cannot get this to unmute all of um, the participants. So I'm just going to read a question and then mute myself so that you can answer. So we have a question from Tiffany Parrish that says, for an organization. Oh, I, I already got that one, Dina. Oh, okay, good. Can you see those then? Yep, I can see them, and I just answered that one. Okay, good. I was just going to say, I've got myself muted over here trying to figure out how to unmute everybody. I, I don't see how I can do it, Katie. I'm so sorry. That's okay. No worries. No worries. I, I've been there before, too. So if you have a question and, you are, and we aren't able to hear you, feel free to type in the chat box. But it appears that we may not have any more questions currently. So... Again, thank you all time. I really appreciate it. Um, can you share your contact information again? Absolutely. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the chat box. Oh, to all panelists. Oh yeah. Type answer. Okay. Answer live. I think that I um, sent it to her, Dina. Got it. She got it. Okay. Any other questions before we? Does not seem like it. Well, again, thank you all for your time. Have a wonderful day. It's beautiful out, at least in Indiana. I'm not sure where everyone is. Thanks, Katie. All right. Thanks, Dina. Bye, everyone.